everyone, welcome back to 25 Sweepies and welcome back to the Christmas series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to illustrate a bow that you can use in a lot of Christmas illustrations. It's kind of the method that I use over and over again and yet even though I am using the same method every time they all come out a little bit different just like whenever you're folding a real bow. So I'm really excited to show you how to do this so let's go. So as always, I have my 3000 by 3000 canvas with the DPI set to 300 so that way it is good print quality if I wanted. And I'm gonna go to the layer panel and change the color of the background because I want to do, well, I guess I could have left it white because we're doing a reddish pinkish bow, but I decided to go with a blue background just for a little something fun and different. Now I'm going to go into my layer panel and kind of rename some layers and add some layers. So the first one here I've got, um, well, for one, it doesn't know how to read my handwriting today, apparently, but I'm going to be putting the bow sides in this la first layer here. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to rename it. I'm kind of like pre-organizing here. And then I've got the middle of the bow. Then I'm gonna add another layer and it's going to be called, hmm, I think we're gonna call this one like the backs of the bow or like the ties or something like that. Anyway, you kind of get it that we're breaking this whole bow into um, three different layers. We're gonna actually probably end up with more than that, but this is gonna give us a good basis. So I'm also gonna go ahead and like reorganize them to the form in which they would be used in. So I went like the ties, the hanging part of the bow in the very back, and then the middle, the very front, and then the actual like big floofy bow parts in the middle. So now that we've kind of, I've probably confused you by now, but we're gonna move on to like actually getting started. And today we're gonna skip the whole sketch phase of this. We're just gonna go directly in with color. So pick the color that you want your bow to be and go to your middle layer, which is actually like the top layer. And we're gonna be doing the middle part of the bow. So I'm gonna go to the wrench and the canvas and turn on my grid guide. So I've got that big plus sign so we can make things equal. And I'm just going to draw a circle or oval shape in the middle of my screen for the middle part of the bow. Once I've got that, I'm gonna fill it in, which takes no time at all. And that's all I'm gonna do on this layer for now. I am gonna center it with the plus lines or kind of close to center. We're gonna play with the spacing of this later. Now I'm gonna go back to the um, bow sides layer which is actually my middle layer and I'm gonna turn on the symmetry tools so like we went to the grid guide I went to the grid guide and pressed the symmetry option and now on this layer I have that turned on and what I do on one side is gonna replicate on the other so now I am actually creating the big floofy bow sides I'm gonna start with like this interesting teardrop shape and then round out the bow bottom and suddenly it's looking like a bow. So while I have this symmetry layer on, I am gonna go ahead and color in this section rather than move on to the next part. And I'm only going to fill in the bottom half, not that top loop because technically that color would be like the backside of the bow. So it's color is gonna be different for design purposes. And we're gonna do that later on. So I'm just coloring this in. I left the symmetry tool on, that way it goes a little bit quicker. And again, you can use this method however you want and you can make your bow as thick or as floofy as you want, just have fun with it. We're gonna be doing another bow tomorrow, but I wanted to give you kind of like the basis of the tools in which that I use and just kind of my easy way that I have found to do them. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and center all the layers that I have things on. Actually, I'm not gonna center, I'm gonna make it above center because we need the little tie parts to fall down. So we're gonna go to the very bottom layer that we have and start putting in like the ends of the ribbon. And I think we're actually gonna need two layers for this because we don't want them to touch. So um, I thought I was gonna use the symmetry, but I decided I'm not going to, so I need to go turn the um, symmetry tool off. So now that I've got that turned off, um, I'm gonna start putting in the ties. They would kind of go like the opposite direction 
So there's one. I'm going to leave that there. Well, sometimes I don't like the little tie that I do here, so I kind of try multiple times to make it decent enough. So if you don't like yours on the first try, no worries. Keep going. Keep trying. I wanted that cute little like pointed end here. Um, once I've gotten that, I'm going to add another layer below it. And I'm going to do the same thing going in the opposite direction. Again, it takes a few tries to get the shape that I want. And eh, they're not wonderful. This one is not like the right angle. So I'm actually just going to adjust that here a bit. It's looking a little bit better. Still not wonderful, but... Um, you can probably get the premise of it. So we're going to go with that. And now it's time to fill it in. So fill in the ties of the bow at the bottom on their perspective layers that you did them on. I also don't know if I mentioned, but I'm using the 6B pencil for everything that I've done in this video thus far. And we'll continue to only use that one for this video. I'm just going to fix little corners there. And now I'm going to turn the alpha lock on there, but move back to the other tie layer and fill that one in real quick. Okay, almost done. Okay, now we've got all of these different parts on separate layers. Um, it's time to start adding some shadows. So, and just kind of make this whole look less flat. So I'm going to take the color I'm currently working with. I'm going to turn down the brightness and turn the saturation up a little bit to create the same shade, just a little bit darker. So I can color in the back part of the bow here. If you want to do this on one of the lower layers, you can do it on one of the same layers that you did like the bottom ties on. That's perfectly fine. As long as it's behind the main bow sides. And that is good for that part. Now I'm going to go to the very, very bottom tie that we did and I'm going to add a layer above it. I'm going to turn on a clipping mask so whatever I do on this layer only touches that bottom tie. And I've turned on a multiply blend mode and now I'm going to add some shade shadows here. <laughs> Shading, shadows, same thing. Um, there we go. See, it's really, really very much a stark shadow here so I'm actually going to smudge it out a little bit to make it look more gradual, a bit more natural. And already... This has way more definition than it did and it looks a lot less flat. So I'm just going to smudge that out until I am happy and content with what it looks like. Also, this shadowing kind of makes it a lot more red toned, which I like. So now I've gone to the other tie. I've added a layer above it. I'm doing the same exact motions where I turn a clipping mask on to it and a multiply blend mode. And I'm adding more shadows. This time it's going to go kind of under the middle of the bow and onto this bottom piece here. I'm going to smudge that one out as well. Again, you just do this until you're happy and content with what it looks like. And add a little bit more definition here. Smudge it out again. And I think I kind of like this. It's looking pretty decent. Um, now we're going to go up to the, the big side part of the bows, so the big floofy parts, add a layer above it, turn on a clipping mask, and turn it on to multiply blend mode. Using the same color, I'm going to add some shading spots that we're going to smudge out. And it already gives so much more texture to the actual bow. So at this point, you can keep doing this until your heart is content with it and it has all of the definition and texture that you like or would desire. 
Um, at this point, I'm also going to add a layer above it and have it set up the same way. Clipping mask, multiply blend mode, and just add some like little wrinkly bits in the middle. Like the ribbon is like a little squished in this area, and I'm going to smudge those out again to make them look a little less um, planned, <laughs> even though they very much were. Now everything is starting to look pretty good and I feel like the middle part needs a little assistance so I'm going to do the same functions again, add a layer on top of it, make a clipping mask and turn on the multiply blend mode and I'm going to add some shadows to this piece and smudge it out. So basically this whole ribbon was based upon using the same exact color and multiply blend modes and smudging things out to getting them to the point where you really like them. And there you have it. You have a bow. Now I'm going to go a little bit over the top here and first we're going to organize things since everything's like a whole bunch of layers. We're just going to group everything into a big group and call it bow so we know where it is and it looks a little more organized because we're gonna add some texture to the background but I'm gonna do something a little different here so I'm gonna duplicate that whole layer that whole group that we did and we're gonna flatten it so we actually have a layer that is just solely the bow and I'm gonna grab the background color and I'm going to fill that layer after having an alpha lock turned on turn on the multiply blend mode and see now we have the same um, ribbon done just in a different color. So I'm gonna actually deepen it a bit color wise and we're gonna make this ribbon look like it's standing a bit off of the surface. So I'm gonna go and turn the alpha lock off on that layer and I'm gonna play with the Gaussian blur and kind of blur it a bit. As you guys, if you watch carefully, you guys can see the intensity change where now there's a little bit of a shadow behind the bow. And I'm going to deepen the color a little bit because it needs to be a bit more um, harsh, I guess you could say. And now I'm going to play with the liquify tool and the push option and kind of move the shadow around so I can pick where I want there to be a shadow and where I don't want there to be a shadow. That way we can kind of make it look like the bottom parts of the bow are like pulled up a little bit. Whereas the others may be tied to the wall that it's on or something. Again, you don't have to do this part. You could have stopped. This was just a little something extra that I wanted to try. And just so you guys can see, you don't feel like you have to follow along with this part by any means. And once um, you are happy with that, if you did do it, you can just stop by turning. You can press that little wand button selection tool up near the gallery to turn that part off and actually i think i am about content with it so now i'm gonna press the layer panel and i'm gonna add some more texture to the background like i've been doing in this whole series actually i want to change the shadows real quick hold on Okay, maybe you guys can't see it, but I feel like that really made a difference. So I'm adding a, another layer. I'm turning on the multiply blend mode. I'm gonna go to my brush library and I'm gonna grab that texture brush that I've been using from the Gladys Things. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over everything, turn down the opacity a little bit, just so we get that nice texture in the background. And that completes this bow. Here is the finished look at it. As you guys can see, I think you can see it better here, but there is a little bit of a shadow underneath the like tied part that's coming out and I feel like that really kind of adds something to this so that covers it for this video tomorrow we're gonna be doing something that's very much related to this video so be sure to come back for another video tomorrow I can't wait for you guys to see this and if you guys do recreate this or use this method please let me know I'd love to see and I think that covers it so thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you later bye